But we've got about four weeks, five weeks. So we're back, in the, <laughs> we're back in the gym again, putting in that work. The usual routine, there's nothing new, except for this new merchandise. You know, feel good, feel relaxed. I chose some Wakaki green today because it represents war. You know what I mean? Let's get it in. Feeling like I'm ready for the job. Got the pedal to the metal. I've been grinding non-stop. Killing every instrumental. And I knew just what I wanted. Now I gotta go and get it. And I'm never looking back. Only looking where I'm headed. And I done it for a minute. Trying to get another one. So now I can never settle. Gotta be one of the best. Got me feeling like Marcelo. Let's see where we're at. I think as a heavyweight, you do have to focus on your weight. Bit I think that's better. 111. For this fight, if I could come in at 112 max, 112, one, I'm pushing 113, but 112 would be good. I'd be happy. The last fight of attack, I'm coming at 116, 117. It's not good, man. That's what I used to think is that the bigger you are, the more power, right? But that's not the key. The quicker you are, the more you can float. So when I started realizing, I have to watch my weight. I need to keep my weight down as a heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Got my slides off, I'm 10 toes, you get me? No more sunshine. Let it snow. <laughs> we finally kiss goodnight. How are we? We ready. We ready. We ready. Oh! <laughs> oh, see, I'm ready. Think fast. I'm ready. Think fast. <laughs> Alright, enough of the games, lad. <laughs> Morning. 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 Marco Antonio Barrera come in the gym one day after after sparring. And I asked him if he could just sign my boxing gloves. And I'm still training them to this day. So even though he signed them, I use them for my bags, pads. It's nice. Very humble guy. Being a boxer isn't an everyday trade that can take anywhere around the world. Do you know what I mean? It's not something I can do till I'm 50 years old. I just realized I've got a short window and I need to express myself and my talent to the world. So. It's a real hustle, man. Sparring with Joshua, we know that whatever opponents we're going to face in the amateurs, we've already, you know, sparred with Joshua, we can expect, we can expect the best. So it prepares us to be the sharpest and the best that we can be. As I've come out, Fraser's gone in, and it's good to be sharp three rounds. You can have another good sharp three rounds there. <laughs> keep positive I'd say is every time it gets tough and when I feel like I don't want to do it there is someone out there in this world laying on a hospital bed begging for a second chance at life I'm sitting there healthy with good friends heating light running tap water I don't think I have any excuse to not go hard or live life with a smile on my face In less than a year, we've managed to secure two heavyweight championship fights and it's, uh, it's phenomenal. I respect Parker for stepping up, I stepped up. We both agreed terms, no complication, no egos involved and we've got to fight together. I'm happy, it's an interesting fight for the public, for myself. That's why these opportunities I take with both hands because they're great learning opportunities as well. Even though I am the current IBF, WBA, IBO heavyweight champion, Remember, Joseph Parker is the w WBO heavyweight champion. So I put my mindset as a challenger because I'm challenging for his belts to unify the division. So it's a great time in boxing and it's a great opportunity for me.
what I get pleasure out is helping others. And when I see them smiling, it helps me keep positive. So seeing others do well, seeing others happy helps me. So the people around, I keep positive people around me that smile and enjoy my success. So they want to lift me up because it makes them happy and I want to lift them up because it makes me happy. So it's a great circle of positive energy that we all keep around us. Every fight, because of the importance of it, I emphasize it more. Because it's so important, these fights, I can't afford to make mistakes. That's why I'm pushing, I'm making sure technique, this, that, and so on and so forth, because um, the stakes are high. Mistakes have to be minimal. It's a blessing upon blessing, upon another blessing to be here amongst great people, you know, leading the same path different views but we all have the same same front door living in the same building but we all have different views and uh, we, we break bread together we eat together and we love together and hopefully we don't have to cry together so enjoy the food good day yeah, man just finishing off the evening now doing a bit of physio with Cena. it's a Thursday evening I just come back from the gym we've done a bit of bike work and then we went in the pool as well and just relaxed in the sauna for like five, ten minutes to sweat out the chlorine and stuff. And yeah, now we're just finishing off the evening. It's still early, but I'm going to catch an early night, get some good rest. So I start the day fresh tomorrow. Tomorrow's the weigh-in and I'll do some boxing again tomorrow. I feel good. I've been keeping active this week, much more than usual. This is the seat that she puts in there. <laughs> I'm like, like 16. I'm only a couple of kilos lighter than this. This be 87 kg. And, I, and that meant that was when I put on my bubble. Good, mate. How are you? Perfect. Good, Josh. How are you? Good. Yeah? Looking really, really well. Tough few weeks, though, isn't it? Fucking hell. You worked hard, though. Tough training camp, them runs, oh, <laughs> run, kill me, G. I had to mentally just crack on. I've <laughs> been broken down a few times in that camp. Physically broken down. Mentally. As well. Yeah, because now I don't weigh so much, I can do the work yeah. without it taking so much out of me. But when I'm doing it now, it's like I can give a bit more. Yeah. So it's like, you're always pushing. We just kept on pushing, pushing, mm. pushing throughout the camp. Just tough. Was hard, right? Really hard run. Right? camp I've decided that the training doesn't stop until Sunday so just because it's fight week it's not time to switch off it's about 8 30 we're about to do my last session on the Friday night with the supporters we always like to give time when we can We've got a good format. I have to focus on the training at hand because it's the night before the big fight. But I do understand it's a great opportunity for people to kind of meet and get things signed. So I just pull them up and say, what do you think about coming in to watch a session? And sometimes it's funny because they're like, are you sure? Of course, man, come in. You know, we've got my security there, my trainers there. We've got a solid camp. And they come in, you know, and they just, uh, they respect my time, I respect their time as well. And it, it's a win-win for all of us. And I think like, in terms of memories, they're golden times, golden memories that people will cherish. And I hope I can go on and you know, create a legacy in this sport. And if that's the case, those people play a massive part in my legacy.
Ah, uh, you can get a little clamp to it. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's things like, uh, Fred Scott. God willing. I get the win tomorrow. I say to Higgins or someone in the CSA. Is there anyone from Parker's team of representatives here? Yeah, Big yeah. respect to, to Parker. You spoke a good game, but I'd just really love to know what you think about my performance. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think! <laughs> It's the night before the fight, I feel good, I feel focused, I feel determined. When I look in the mirror, I can look back at myself and truly say, I've done everything possible, I've ran, I've slept, I've sparred, I've bucked, I ain't got no corners. So I believe that I'm going to be victorious tomorrow and then I can look forward onto who else I'm going to compete with because I'm definitely interested in becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world sooner rather than later. So half two, lunch, Ryan's going to do it's up to you, you can have grilled fish or chicken, we got oh, sea, vegan. sea bass or chicken. Vegan. Just or like, just no meat, no fish. Just same. fresh, just fresh food. Fresh food, yeah. like, like avocado, um, yeah. falafel, some veg, and some mate. rice. Sound. I was crying, fuck, I can come up with some ideas for vegan lunches. Do you know what they do? That's what they do in um, Cuba. You spin around for a minute. Yeah, why do you do that? Because it's like the effect of getting hit. Ah, so you spin around, get dizzy, and then I'll like kind of throw punches at you so you get used to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being, maybe being the story. Exactly. Yeah, the story. See? Put your head down, I think. Jim, count to 10, please. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Jeez! Oh, it's a weak jab, fam. Get on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Three, two, one, go. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. Look at this guy. Wait, does it match you up? That's gone. Jeez! Defense, defense. No, defense. Oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm everywhere! That's, That's a lot harder! It's hard, isn't it? That's a lot harder! <laughs> I've waited for this hey. team walk for hey. how many months? Ready. Ready. Hey. I'm ready! I wasn't ready in the last one. I'm the ready! Out there, right? We're back! Yeah. Down, down the street. Ready to rock and roll? Yeah. All the way we lit, Balenciaga's on a kick. So I've been popping hard as shit in any mile radius. To give you the truth though, I feel like a poppy too low. Cause now we on top of the roof, busting that moves like this shit is sumo. You know, it's the first time four belts are on the line ever in history. It's been 30 years since two undefeated fighters have come together and um, unified the division. Almost now, the weird thing I was thinking about the other day is that these shows, these stadium fights, become normal. Like, the scale of it is normal for us. As a fight build that's been happening, I tend to start watching a lot of the hype that's going on. So 
So I said, scrap that. Let me start watching things that are going to benefit me. So I started watching Holyfield again. How he got around the ring, when he got tired, how he weathered the storm. It was the first time I stepped in the ring in my 10 year career as an amateur slash professional that I felt comfortable. 38 knockouts, neither's tasted defeat. Just under 80,000 here on this momentous occasion. They're not going to take any chance of this early. The Tack Empire was great and amazing, but this was on like another level, intensity, everything. Second round. Parker not looking comfortable, he's on his back foot, this jab's landing now and he's looking hesitant. The old saying is, the right hand can take you around the block, but a good jab will take you around the world. A jab, solid from Joshua. Someone's O has got to go. Joshua landed some nice looking, accurate punches here now. And this is where Joshua looks powerful after connected push on the face of Anthony Joshua as he moved in. Here we go, Parker. Starts to unload here. Joshua went for it and now it's turning into a bomb. Bomb that here. He looks in control, but up close as he tries the uppercut. Nice to shot. re establish with the jab and a left hand. And that got through. And Parker has to take it. Joshua looks powerful and strong in the 10th round. Parker under pressure. Final round though, so Anthony Joshua now in a very handy lead. Joshua matching with a right hand. To intervene. Respect for the two of them in the end. Anthony Joshua goes to distance for the first time in his professional life. Three judges scored for the winner by unanimous decision. The fighting bride of the United Kingdom, Adrian Anthony. Winning don't really mean much because it seems that it's never enough. That's what people always ask me, how are you going to celebrate? And deep down in my heart of hearts, I feel like my celebration is to hustle harder. It's not to enjoy the fruits of my labour, it's to start planting more seeds because I feel like I need to bear more fruits. And um, that's just how I feel with this, with this business I'm in now, is that people feel like it's not enough and they want more, they want more, they want bigger stadiums, bigger fights. They want to see me get dropped. They want to see me get knocked out and come back. But essentially, that's never going to happen. I won't get beat. I refuse to get beat because I have that hunger to improve and dedicate myself to the sport.